Hey everyone, Ollie here. So I've been using the Sony InZone M9 monitor for the past week or so now. And yeah, it's an interesting monitor. It's interesting to actually see Sony come out with a gaming monitor, something they haven't done for years, mainly because obviously they're focused on their TVs. So it's really interesting to see them come out with an actual dedicated sort of desk monitor, gaming monitor, work monitor, whatever you want to call it, because I feel like it can actually be used for both gaming and work. And yeah, I've been using it for the past week. Here's my experience. When it comes to the unboxing, the packaging was actually off to a good start because it just came in a pretty normal cardboard box, which should make it quite easy to recycle. But then they had to go and ruin it with god awful polystyrene. I absolutely hate polystyrene. Please, manufacturers, tech companies, whoever just makes products, please stop using polystyrene. It's an absolute pain in the ass to clean up. Disappointingly, there are no cables included with the product, no HDMI cables, no display port cables. There's not even an included USB cable for the USB hub, which I, to be honest, is, I think is quite a miss. Like it's surprising how many more manufacturers are doing that. It would have been nice to see just the cable included. I feel like it's really not that expensive to do that. It does come with a pretty big power brick though, which would have been fine if it meant the monitor is thin and sleek, but that's not the case. The monitor is thick AF, quite surprising to be honest, as I don't see why it's so thick. When handling the monitor, it also feels pretty hollow and cheap, mostly made from plastic that, you know, just feels disappointingly cheap. When it comes to connectivity, the monitor does come with all of the ports that you'd expect, including a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a USB hub, a USB type C port, a display port 1.4, and two HDMI 2.1 ports. The USB C port can only provide 15 watts of power, which means you most likely need to also plug your laptop into another external power source. This is one feature I always look for in monitors as I'm a Mac user, and most of my viewers I know are also MacBook users. And I like to connect my MacBook up to an external display just using one cable. I don't wanna to have to connect it to power as well. So. It's a shame that Sony didn't include like a 90 watt, 100 watt, even though 60 watt would have been fine enough, I think. But yeah, 15 watts, really not powerful enough. The design. So I know design is subjective, but personally, I'm not actually a fan of the design of this monitor. It has a pretty boring design. And like I said earlier, it just feels quite cheap. The back of it is white and it's also pretty damn thick. It sort of follows the design of the PS5, which already isn't the best looking console, let's be honest. However, if you are looking for a monitor to match that aesthetic, this is it. There's also a built-in RGB strip on the back, which is very subtle. You can't see it that well in a bright room, but in a dark room against a white wall, it can actually look quite good. I'm personally not all that into unicorn vomit, but even just set out white, I think it looks pretty nice. The stand it comes with though, is just downright awful. It has the typical gamery aesthetic without being all that useful. It gives you some movement up and down, but that's it. It also just isn't sturdy whatsoever, causing the monitor to wobble very, very easily. I would highly recommend mounting this to a VSR. So where the M9 might lack in exterior design, it definitely makes up for it with the screen. The M9 has full array local dimming. There are 96 dimming zones, not as good as mini LED or OLED, but it's getting there. You see mini LED and OLED in pretty much every high-end TV right now. And yeah, it's slowly filtering down to gaming monitors and smaller sort of monitors and TVs, but it's still not there yet. I think there's only a few. I think there's the Alienware one and there's a couple of Samsung ones. But other than that, there really aren't any other sort of mini LED or OLED sort of displays. So this is sort of in the middle because it's not fully sort of mini LED. There's only 96 zip dimming zones, but it's still better than a standard sort of LCD or IPS panel because instead of just one LED lighting up the whole panel, there's 96 different LEDs lighting up 96 different areas on the display. Because of these 96 dimming zones, I could tell the difference straight away when using it. It is actually very, very good. The bright parts of the scene are super bright. Sometimes when playing a game in a dark room, I actually found it a bit too bright, forcing me to bring down the brightness. The full array local dimming also makes movie watching a much nicer experience as you get a lot more sort of contrast when watching the footage. Black parts can be a lot darker compared to LCD panels. But again, it just varies on the scene. If there's a scene with lots of little sort of specular highlights, it's not going to be that great there. But for most other sort of movie watching, it's going to be much better than a standard LCD panel. It covers 95% of the DCI-P3 color range. And out of the box, it's not actually that color accurate. I did have to mess around a few things here and there. 
I found it especially a bit too blue um, and I found that the standard mode is the best mode to be in. If you try any of the other modes, the color really does sort of go out of whack. Um, so yeah, keeping it in the standard mode and then making little adjustments is where you'll what you'll need to do to get this monitor looking pretty good. You'd think a monitor like this would also be primarily targeted at PS5 owners considering it's by Sony but it seems as though Sony are also going for PC gamers too. The product page doesn't even mention the PS5 until you get near the bottom of the page. So it does support 4K at 144Hz and supports G-Sync, which is perfect for PC gamers. When you do hook it up to a PS5 though, it does have some PS5 only features such as auto HDR mapping, and auto genre picture mode, which automatically changes the picture profile depending on what you're doing on your PS5. So if you're gaming, it will go into gaming mode. And if you're watching a movie, it will go into cinema mode. I primarily tested it with my PS5, but I did also try it with my PC and it also worked perfectly with my MacBook. As expected, games look stunning on this display and the experience is one of the best you'll actually get in this price range. When I connected it up to my M1 MacBook Air, it worked absolutely flawlessly right out of the box. I was able to get the full 4K at 144Hz and you can even enable HDR, the option actually showed up. Playing HDR content from YouTube looked great and I can definitely tell the difference when I had the local dimming on or off, but it's still naturally not as good as an OLED you'll see blooming if you're looking for it. Overall though, I think for $900, which this monitor goes for, in the UK, it's actually more expensive. It goes for a thousand pounds. And when you convert that, you know, that's quite a bit more than $900. But yeah, for that sort of price, I, I personally don't think it's worth it. I feel like you're either better off spending a little bit more money and going for a proper mini LED gaming monitor from someone like Samsung, or just saving the money and sticking to a standard LCD display because unless you're really set on having sort of 96 dimming zones, which I don't think are, are sort of like game changing. It's not going to be like a stunning experience like it is with OLED. Yeah, and unless you really want that, I just don't think it's worth the money. It has a great panel and it's nice to see something like full array local dimming. But like I said, it lacks in other areas, which I think should be covered by a monitor at this price point, such as the poorly powered USB-C port, the poor aesthetic design. Well, I think it's poor anyway and the not so great stand. It's just a shame really, because I feel like Sony are actually in the perfect position to make high-end gaming monitors. You know, they're a company that I would trust to make high-end gaming monitors. They make great TVs already. But with this monitor, their first monitor, I feel like they're just missing a few things here and there. I think the next iteration, if they add these things, maybe update the aesthetic design, maybe make the bezels thinner, make the monitor itself thinner, make it feel like a thousand dollar product. Yeah, they they would have really nailed it. It's, it would have been an absolutely perfect product and would have been a no-brainer to recommend to other people who are looking for sort of one monitor setup, one they can use with their PC, their PS5, and their laptop if they want to as well. So yeah, Sony got really close here. They definitely got really, really close, but I think they just missed a few things here and there. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.